Hello, welcome back to the subscribe blog. It's been a while, um, summer break, at least here in Europe, and also time to learn some new things. Um, and uh, I will change a few things here. Um, I'll uh, probably leave less space between the episodes. I'm gonna do them more frequently, but keep them shorter. And uh, I'm starting a series of um, explorations around small devices and how we can go and integrate them with the cloud because a lot of people are trying to build um, devices or trying to build products that are integrated with the cloud that are can be remote controlled with smartphones or um, where we can go and fetch telemetry, in aggregate telemetry, find out how the products behave. And these are all things we would like to do through using cloud services, like basically take a small device, small footprint device and uh, enhance its capabilities um, and also leverage its capabilities by bringing all together the data that it brings and also you know, by uh, allowing uh, remote control, remote switching on that device through the internet. And the cloud is a great enabler for those things and uh, connecting those devices to the cloud is something that is a great challenge for a lot of people. And so I wanna um, explore this space in the next several weeks in a few short episodes. This is the first one. And uh, so I'm gonna show you I'm going to walk you through um, a few of the devices, uh, explain a few of the devices that I'm uh, going to use on that journey. I'm actually still missing uh, the one or the other, and uh, I'm, the list that I have is not exhaustive yet because I'm first for you to be able to follow this um, as a if you're also new to the microcontroller space or as new as I am. Um, I have taken a number of platforms which are based built for prototyping. So there's no soldering required, which is important because uh, soldering is uh, complicated. I'm, I'm, I just bought soldering gear, but I'm sure I'm going to destroy half of the world with it. Um, so for people who are soldering averse, there's um, prototyping platforms. And prototyping in that sense means that you start, you build a circuit. And if you're happy with that circuit, then you can go and take that prototype and then you can actually go and build a printed circuit board out of it and then put the components on it and then have a device. But for prototyping, um, all these platforms are great and allow you to build um, some as if devices. Um, I'm gonna start with, and this is something that I have wired so you can actually look at the, let's go and switch on the, the, plat on the camera here. I have a device that is an Arduino. It's an Arduino ethernet shield. And uh, if you think this is the processor, then you're actually wrong because that is the ethernet chip. The ethernet chip also has TCP on board. So it doesn't require no operating system. There is no operating system. And the actual microcontroller is this little thing. Um, this has two kilobytes of RAM and has 32 kilobytes of storage uh, for programs. Uh, while this here, the, the network chip has 32 uh, has uh, 16 kilobytes of uh, RAM that's used as network buffer. So this little th thing has two kilobytes of RAM available and runs on minimal power. So the reason to, to use these processors, the reason to use these little things is that they're cheap. They cost, um, you know, in bulk, they cost almost next to nothing. Um, a few dollars if you buy them, uh, if you buy them singly. Um, and it's a it's a business of scale. All these uh, all the hardware, so it's hard to find a good pricing. Good pricing information basically goes all in bulk. Um, that's how that that's how that generally works. But this is a very tiny little controller. So if you buy, if you build a toy, or if you build uh, some, you know, little household electronics, that's a wonderful little thing to put in there. And you can make a very very compact little board. Um, that uh, has all the controls on it. Um, so the Arduino is using these you know, industry level um, uh, microcontrollers and makes them approachable for prototyping. What I've done here is something enormously simple. I have on um, pin nine, that's the digital output pin nine. Um, here I have this pl plug onto this breadboard um, onto the plus board. Then I have that connected up here. And then have that on that resistor, 220 ohm. I um, have that uh, hooked up to a um, LED. 
and that LED sits here on ground. Um, and uh, so that's if the if uh, pin nine kind of goes high, if it starts emitting five volts, then that LED is uh, illuminated. If it uh, drops uh, uh, down, if there's no current flowing, then obviously it's off. And you can go in and control that with a program, of course. That's something you can do with a much, much simpler circuit. But it's kind of the Hello, the hello World um, application, mostly for each microcontroller to kind of show um, how those things work. Um, so Hello World is kind of the blinking application. Um, before I go and show you the program for this, uh, let's go and take a look at the Arduino website. The Arduino website here is uh, at arduino.cc. And uh, here you can go and download the software for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And um, then they have uh, also references. They have inf information about the various products, the various boards that they have, what the, the shields are. And shields are things you can kind of plug onto um, the Arduino from the top. So there's a broad variety of these little Arduinos, which are all boards which you can build things on. And here's a proto shield, which you can go and put your own, um, your, instead of a breadboard, that you can go and put your own components, components and designs on top of. Um, I have more things. So this is, um, and I'm going to use them later. This is a Seduino. It's like the Arduino Mega. And um, the Seduino is made by Seed Studio. And Seed Studio, um, those guys are making a, a bunch of really interesting things. So this is a Seduino ADK. And ADK stands for the Accessory Development Kit for Android. So um, if you want to build a accessory for an Android phone that you can go and connect to it using Bluetooth or using um, um, the, uh, um, the USB port. If you want to build something that can connect to it, you need to go and design that somewhere. So they built this ADK. And so you have this little microcontroller on here. You have this prototyping board. So this allows you to go and prototype out what accessory you want to build. And once you've prototyped this out, then you can go and, and make a printed circuit out of it and uh, then uh, uh, you know make a custom built device. There's a shield. I just plugged into this, um, onto this one, which has a bunch of sockets. This is the Seed Studio Grove system, and the Grove system allows you to take um, uh, componentized little devices. Let's here's this thing, um, and uh, what they've done is they, or what they're doing is they're taking things like, like let me even open this one. They take things like a relay. It's a relay, and then also put this little uh, thing on there, and then you can go and connect this up into um, this shield, and I have, a re I have a few relays here, I have a few LEDs here in this kit, and I also have a servo, and um, a, this is a very cool thing, it's a distance sensor um, that you can go and probably mount in, in front of a car, and then um, make sure, and the car that knows itself that it's no, not too far away from a wall and better slows down. So that's the um, ADK and also the Grove kit by um, a Seed Studio. What we're also going to play with is Gadgeteer. Gadgeteer is based on the .NET Micro Framework platform, um, which is uh, made by Microsoft and uh, or sponsored by Microsoft. And here's a... Um, um, this is from GHI Electronics. This is the, this looks much like um, the Grove. And here's the other side of it, that's where the microcontroller sits. And this is, instead of having an LED, there's an OLED display here that I'm gonna use to show things. Um, so this also connects together with that little wired cable. And uh, I have more of this, I have some relays. Um, I have uh, a, uh, this is the power supply and USB. There's some network, and uh, there's also humidity and temperature sensor in here. So that is powered by uh, the .NET Micro Framework, and uh, there's the Gadgeteer information right there. Also powered by the .NET Micro Framework, but not in the house yet, is Netduino. Netduino is also a platform that's kind of like Arduino, but programmed using the .NET Micro Framework. So we're gonna take a look at that.
um, as well as a platform. And then, of course, um, everybody's uh, current darling, the Raspberry Pi, um, that is a full blown computer. It's astonishing to compare the sizes. So, um, as I've been in the 8 bit world, I just dug out this. This is a ZX81 and the ZX81 kind of in a in a different key with a different keyboard because it was hard to type on so I bought myself this extended keyboard and put the ZX81 in there. Um, this machine is my first computer. I bought this 1983. And this thing here is so much so incredibly more powerful and yet cheaper um, today than the ZX81 when I bought it when I bought this one. Um, this has, uh, from a power perspective, is uh, a little less powerful than that tiny, tiny processor that sits on that little board. This had one kilobytes of RAM, four megahertz, and uh, 32 mega, two, two, 32 k of RAM with that extension here. But uh, that's all it had. So it's actually a little bit less powerful than that tiny, tiny chip that's on there. And the Raspberry Pi as a full-blown Linux computer, as um, FBAS or composite out, um, sound out, full HDMI out, um, has two USB ports, the disc is an SD disc, and the USB ports, I have a tiny, tiny Bluetooth stick and a tiny, tiny 802.11n stick, which is also fairly amazing. Um, ARM-based processor, um, what you would also find in your smartphone, probably, and um, a uh, 512 or 256K of RAM. Um, from a cost perspective, the Pi is very different from all the other ones. Um, these other, um, the things that I should show you, the Arduino Mega here or the Uno um, that I have, or Uno Ethernet, Ethernet version uh, that I have here, and they're prototyping boards and the chips Basically, if you build, if you prototype something and you make a, a circuit out of this and make a printed control board, you can make a device that's probably three, four, five bucks. This is a full featured PC and you get this for, um, this is a nonprofit organization and they built this thing for 25 to 35 bucks. So if you're adding, you know, a difference of $20, $20 to a product, like a product like this thing, it's a, this is a real, real remote control car that I put, um, I picked apart that's going to make much of a difference so even though the pie is cheap the pie is not the same it's it's a uh, it's uh, still a leaps away from these tiny microcontrollers so much as an introduction kind of things overview of things that we're going to we're going to play with and the goal is to go and connect all those things in some way um, into the cloud some of those things we're going to go to connect directly um, the uh, the arduino that sits here um, obviously has a Ethernet port, so we can connect it directly. The um, the Cduino here doesn't, so we're going to go and find different ways to go and connect that to the Internet. Um, the Raspberry Pi has, and for that, actually, the Bluetooth thing has a purpose. Um, the um, Arduino, the Raspberry Pi is likely going to live in the car. This is an Elm interface, um, the Elm 327. 327 and that thing um, connects to the CAN bus in your car. Every car built since 1997 needs to have a CAN bus interface so you can actually go and, and uh, pick up the data. In uh, my Audi, it's right under the steering wheel. You can plug this in, then you can talk to the car, you can get a lot of information out of it and we're gonna go and explore that in uh, one of the coming episodes as well. I'm going to leave you with uh, some uh, code. I'm going to just going to show you how that little program um, works that powers the Arduino right now. Um, I'm using the Arduino IDE. There is also in, um, if you go to visualmicro.com, there's a plugin for Visual Studio, which does exactly the same thing. It takes the Arduino platform, plugs it straight into Visual Studio. Um, but let's go and examine this program. It's a, there's a setup, runs once. Um, that goes and configures that LED pin 9 to output and then there's a loop and that loop sets it to high, delays for, for a second, sets it to low, turns it off and delays it for a second. So it's very simple to go and do those things, uh, very simple programs and what this does is that basically goes on 
in a loop. So it's a fairly simple thing to program. Runs in uh, this, uh, if you haven't recognized the language, this is uh, plain C. It's actually compiling C++. And that's very characteristic of, the, of all the various um, embedded platforms is that C is the dominant programming language in, um, in that area. So we're gonna go and use some of, uh, some of C or C++, but at the level of complexity that we're gonna use it, um, it's gonna be very similar to C Sharp and also very similar to JavaScript, if you're familiar with that. So, so much as, uh, as an introduction to uh, this area. So what you can expect is that I'm gonna go and, and go through um, various ways of how to hook up those devices to uh, not only to the internet, but also to backend cloud services. I'm going to talk about security aspects and we're going to talk about uh, connectivity aspects. And uh, as you would expect, service bus, so messaging, um, will have a role to play as uh, we go and uh, connect up all those devices. Thank you for listening. And we're going to start with hooking up an Arduino and making it accessible through HTTP in the next episode.